But comment, most commentaries agree with that the, the sin Jesus spoke of here was reserved for those who experienced his power, his words, and miracles. It was reserved for those who stood in the presence of Christ and yet denied the claim. It was reserved for them. However, these same commentaries also agree that there is a sin very similar and just as dangerous today. Remember, Jesus declared that any and all sin could be forgiven. If one experiences conviction of sin and truly repents, forgiveness is available. No question. I would never question that. However, if they reject the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and never come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, they will and cannot be forgiven. It is possible to reject the conviction of the Spirit and die lost in sin. Wow. It, it, that should make those of us who know and love the Lord Jesus could drop to our knees in prayer and first of all to praise Him for calling us out and giving us the power of faith and the power of the grace to receive that which He give, has given us. But it also should make, make us in our next breath Lift up our voices and cry out for those who are lost and headed for a crisis eternity, especially those who have sat under the gospel and heard the word and rejected it, because they are the ones that are facing the unforgivable, unpardoned sin. Bottom line is, as long as you are living and the Spirit is dealing with you, forgiveness is available. If you reject Christ and die in your sin, if there is no repentance, there is no forgiveness. When you leave this earth, you stand before Christ at the great white throne of judgment. He will look at you and say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you, or you never knew me. Whichever way you want to say it. And they will be sent off into the flames of hell to live for all eternity. We heard this in Dr. Jeremiah this morning. I can't put it as good as he did, but let me tell you this. Every one of us has eternal life. We are not going to die. We are not going to be destroyed. We have eternal life. It will either be spent with him in glory or it will be spent with the, with the devil and his angels in hell. There's only two places. There's nothing in between except the earth that we live on, and the choice has to be made here. And it's a personal choice, and you can choose this morning whether you choose to live with him in glory for all eternity, or whether you choose to live with the devil and his angels in, in, in the pits of hell is your choice. If you reject him, and you die, and you stand before him in judgment, you can plead all you want to. There is no forgiveness. The chance you have is here and now. The Bible says that they plead this way, and you'll stand at the judgment before the Lord Jesus, pleading, we ate, we drank in your presence, and you, you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Depart from me. There'll be weeping and wailing. I believe with all my heart, there's going to be a lot of weeping and wailing at the Holy throne judgment. So if you're saved today, rejoice in your salvation. If you are not, the Lord has revealed your need for salvation. If he is drawing you unto himself, please don't reject. It may be your last opportunity. If you don't believe that, begin to watch and see how many people under the age of 20 are dying like that. See how many people that are 20 to 40 are dying by accident or by physical or by whatever. Take a look at the Bills football game last week and see how close to this young man came to leaving this earth. And yet see how a wonderful God of grace intervened. But we cannot reject the message that God has for us of grace, love, forgiveness and stand before him and expect to be blessed. It's not going to happen. Don't reject his offer. Come while there's time 
and the Holy Spirit is still speaking and leading. But face judgment without Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your word.